You are listening to a MetalExpressRadio.com interview. Enjoy. Hi, it's Mick Burgess here, and I'm now backstage at the Riverside in Newcastle, and I'm joined by Christina from Lacuna Coil. Christina, it's great to see you again. It's great to see you too. Um, I mean, it's been a, it's been a while since we last saw you up in, in Newcastle. Probably about. Um, six years or so so it's good to be back it feels amazing <laughs> it feels amazing to be back i mean this tour is going is going great and i i couldn't wait you know to yeah. come back and i I've, I've been walking around and it's a beautiful city the yeah. day was great so i can't wait to finish the day even yeah. better with the show tonight <laughs> what sort of set list have you got lined up oh uh, well tour? obviously we're focusing on delirium yep. so we're mm -hmm. going to be playing like six songs as if i if i'm not mistaken from from the record uh, but we're also playing some of the classics yeah. like like our truth mm -hmm. or um, heaven's a lie enjoy mm -hmm. the silence mm -hmm. because of course it's, you know, it's always cool to to hear the the the, the, um, the crowd yeah, I don't think you never get, get tired of listening to our no. truth. I think it's just, just got such a fantastic yeah. riff on it. Because <laughs> I mean, a, a fair few bands, you know, over the past few years have, have done um, anniversary tours to celebrate mm -hmm. albums, and it's the 10th yeah. anniversary of Karma Code. Have you, have you done anything on any shows where you've played the albums? Uh, it wasn't for the anniversary, but we played, we entirely played Karma Code uh, a few years ago mm -hmm. because it happened that we played. I think it was the um, uh, Metal Female Voices yeah. Festival. We played two uh, two years in a, in, a, mm -hmm. in a row, and to not to do the same set list or to not to change it slightly, mm -hmm. we, we created a completely new yeah. set list playing Karma, yeah, playing Karma Code. And then a few years ago, we did, I think it was on the 15th anniversary, we did a special two hour shows with a lot of classics and, Kind of going through the history of of Lacuna Coil, and next year is going to be the 20th anniversary. So we're going to be that, that, that's exactly. probably planning something. We didn't think about it yet. Yeah, but we're mean, probably going to do something. That was exactly the, the the next question. You know, I thought 10, 10 years from Karma Code, and to me that still feels like quite a new album. It's 10 years old, but then 20 years since your debut album. So it's, it's incredible how yeah, time flies. You know, when I gone. think when I think that we started almost 20 years ago. It feels really weird because I'm still very excited. I yeah. still love what I do so much. We're still very passionate mm -hmm. about about music and yeah. and the band. So it feels weird to think that so much time's gone. <laughs> That's right. I mean, you always think of like bands like Black Sabbath and 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 and, and you're right. Heap having anniversaries that are 20 years. Yeah, but it's, it's it's pretty curious. <clears throat> it's it's probably because I mean we always kept it fresh and yeah. we never got stuck in in one kind of music in mm. one style so and that's why a lot of people doesn't even have the perception that we've been around yeah yeah I mean, for I'll be, a while i'll be coming to your to your, your new album and your, and your heavier sound in a, in a, in yeah. a couple of minutes but since you last we saw you up here there's been a, a few lineup changes so uh, there's been two or three guys have yeah gone and you've, you've got a couple of new lads in uh, what, what happened there were they just well to... it seems it seems really drastic because uh, from the previous record, three members are mm. not in the band anymore. But the truth is that even when we released Broken Crown Halo, uh, Cristiano, the drummer, and Cristiano, the guitar player, yeah. already resigned before they recorded mm -hmm. the, the, the album. But they decided to be in the record anyway because they said, okay, let's do this, the last celebration all together so, and play. So but they already had. Yeah, so so they did finish the record though. They yeah, they yeah. they actually recorded the record. It's mm. not that they resigned during the recording. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they decided before we said okay, okay, makes total sense. You know, after after years, priority air changes. Uh, the the drummer got a baby girl, so he wanted to take care of her, and they they were probably not uh, that much anymore into the mm. music life, the tour life. So they resigned like more than two years ago, mm -hmm. a lot more than two years ago, before Broken Crown Halo, now I don't yeah. even remember what year it came out. But of course the perception of, the perception of, of people is just like, oh my god, they, they left all together yeah. and it's, it's not like that. <laughs> no, so no. The, the recent departure was only uh, Mouse, mm -hmm. the guitar player, who yeah. decided to, uh, to, to resign as well. But uh, we've been using, uh, using, it sounds, sounds bad we've been using. Yeah. We've been having Ryan, mm -hmm. uh, our, our drummer, yeah. for, for a lot of years now because he was already, uh, he was already tacking for, for Chris. Mm -hmm. 
and it was the natural choice because yeah. I mean he's a fantastic drummer is a, is a monster on stage he knew the songs we we knew how it would have been to live with him on a tour bus which is really important because mm -hmm. we want to we want to have a circle of friends which is almost like a family we don't care about getting someone from outside that we don't really know about who yeah. oh, is a great drummer we don't care about that we really want to feel like a family whenever we move because it's really important yeah, you travel yeah. all the time you're, you're together closed in a tour bus right, yeah. you're together pretty much 24 hours so for us it's really important and um, <coughs> and once we started to to perform live uh, Diego mm -hmm. our uh, new guitar player came came in and started to play the shows with us and we didn't officialize it purely because we didn't want to confuse people because we didn't really know how it was working uh, it might have been the wrong choice in a way because we wanted to test him of course it was the new <laughs> it was the new guy we wanted passed. to see i think he passed yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> i think he passed is is fantastic i think the the new lineup is it's magical. I mean, a lot of yeah. people is complimenting about it. Are, are you Nobody strong? said like, oh, you, you I, I prefer yeah. the old school. I know everybody's mesmerized that's and said that we're, we've been playing the best shows ever. That's always a good sign, isn't it? Yeah. So, so you just, are you just pushing ahead with, with the one guitarist now? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, do you, and, and have you sort of, I mean, you know, quite a lot of bands would have seen three members leaving over a short space of time is, is like you said quite a shock but have you, have you seen this as a sort of opportunity to sort of move off in maybe different directions and try something different and, and fresh well yes and no because to be honest the, the songwriters are still the same yeah. it was Marco our bass player taking care of the music and mm. be the internal mm. producer of the record and this time producer of the of the record as well uh, and then Andrea and, and I taking care of the vocal lines and, yeah. and the lyrics, so nothing changed there. It's, it's not that songwriters left the band, so we yeah. had to recreate. <laughs> but I think that we, after all these years, we reached a good compromise uh, and we were able to kind of separate what Lacuna Coil was and what Lacuna Coil has become yeah. right now. We didn't want to get stuck and do the same thing over yeah. and over just because one album was successful mm. and and people liked it. We didn't want to write the same thing over and over and over and over. We wanted to 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 incorporate all the new influences yeah. and whatever new we were listening to or whatever book we were reading or purely what's, what was happening in life. Mm. I mean, I think it's fair to say that no two albums are the same. You've, you've, you've done more commercial stuff. This time you, you've done a much, much heavier record. Was that, was that a, a, a deliberate step to, to, to go into a sort of no, heavier No, it's not, it's not deliberate, actually. It was very natural. We started, we started writing new songs. And once you start writing, you just like, you understand what type of direction you're going to follow. Uh, the only deliberate thing was that we wanted to write songs that we would really really enjoy to play live because we love our mm. more um, slow songs that we wrote but we figure out that on on stage we we like to perform the, mo the more aggressive yeah, and, yeah. and 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 songs where we can move and kind of Take it all out. Yeah, I, th I think Andrea has really stepped That's up on this how... record, hasn't he? I mean, he's, he's, he's come across as pretty. Yeah, pretty I mean, I've, I've been saying yeah. for, for ages that he has a great growling voice. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes <laughs> we're like, oh, maybe maybe people will be weirded out by that. And I'm, I'm happy that that we use it even more. Yeah, and, and what, what do the new guys bring to the sort of creative process? Did they help with sort of arrangements and, and, and melodies and, and things like uh, that? Diego played two solos in the record because after Mao's departure, we had different guests coming in, giving us, you know, their, their talent, their art with, uh, with solos like Miles Kennedy of yeah, uh, Alter yeah. Bridge. Uh, Marco Baruso was the engineer who helped Marco in the studio put a soul as well on Blood Tears Dust. Uh, we have another friend called Alessandro Laporta. Diego put a couple of, of solos. And um, Mark of uh, Nothing More, uh, the guitar player from, of Nothing More, contributed with, a, with an amazing solo as well. But uh, beside that, 
uh, Ryan definitely helped mm -hmm. because with a new drummer you have a lot of new opportunities. I mean, he's more technical mm -hmm. than, than Chris and he's more powerful. Yeah. So we we could have go in a direction that you can really explore and in the past so Marco wrote stuff for him yeah. so they worked together and then he spent a lot of time at Marco's house because he, he travels with us basically and when he's when he's in Italy is with us all the time so they work together a lot and he definitely contributed. I mean did it take a bit longer on the recording process so, sort of the original units not there anymore and you, you all knew how each other worked no. did it take a little bit longer? Or no. It, no no the time was exactly mm -hmm. the same mm -hmm. and, and actually this time we did everything in Milano yeah which was which was great because I mean we could focus on the studio but we could go back home yeah, and sleep yeah. in our own bed yeah. and because you, you've gone past that stage of let's record in LA because it's really cool and great, but now you've done all I that. I honestly love it just because you get completely out of yeah. your element mm -hmm. and I don't know, I like it better because mm -hmm. I, I feel that I'm really, really focusing on that thing only. Because when you're home, of course, you take your time, you go yeah. out with friends at night <laughs> and then the day after you're recording and you're doing stuff. So you're never like a thousand percent yeah. focused on mm -hmm. that. We, do, we did our best and actually I did my best to not to do anything out of the recording because I really, really wanted to make this record perfect. But it's normal, you go home, you take yeah. care of your stuff as well. <laughs> While, for example, in LA it was perfect because the weather is awesome. So <laughs> when you record, like during the winter time, it's, the weather is always nice. Yeah. It doesn't really you matter. So for singers, it's fantastic. You don't get bad weather in Italy though, do you? Pardon? You don't get bad weather. Yes, weather you do. Yes, yeah. you do. Yeah, everybody has this as myth as this. that in Italy yeah. is always amazing. No, yeah. no, we have we have winters and they're they're pretty cold. Yeah. Not that cold, but they're cold. not as cold as this. Because <laughs> the new, I love the new image as well. The, <coughs> the straight jacket look. Um, who who came up with that? Well, it, it we tied up all together because of the first thing that came out was the world delirium, mm -hmm. and as soon as the theme. Uh, of the record was insanity, and we created this fictional sanatorium mm. with uh, with our name and with a logo and everything. It made sense that uh, the, the 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 clothes on stage would mm. remember uh, the atmosphere. Therefore, we thought about straight jackets. We made them dirty uh, and and bloody, thinking about the tortured mm. soul who, who lived in in this sanatorium. Because, I mean, I mean the, the video of House of Shame, it, it's pure American horror story, isn't it? It's, just, uh, uh, it's, from, from it's a lyrics silent. video, yeah. so we didn't really, we didn't really <laughs> did, do a lot of stuff. Cause you, look, you look spooky in it, though. Uh, it, yeah. it is spooky. Lots it is. I mean, it, uh, obviously, I mean, we love, we love mm. all this stuff. But you will see, I mean, there, there will be new, new videos coming out, and they're going to be... <laughs> they're going to be really yeah. strange. We're going to be <laughs> actors, but for real. Yeah. Because, I mean, bearing in mind what's happened around the world in the last you know last 12 months with Brexit mm -hmm. um, the American presidential election yeah. um, and you know the, the events of what's happening in mainland Europe uh, I mean do you think it's delirium symbolizes what's happening in the 21st yes century? Yes and no because I mean the world will always evolve so mm. I am I'm, I'm not afraid it's part of the evolution we can't expect things to be yeah. exactly the same and sometimes the change can be good I mean it's something that you will see you will see in time, yeah. you know, you can't really say that something is, it's wrong. I mean, of course, sometimes you can, but in, in this case, we, I guess we just have to wait and see because we don't know how mm. things are going to change yeah. in which direction. So mm. we'll, we will see. We'll see. Because over the years, you've done some, you know, you've done some interesting covers from Stars by Dubstar, which is a, which is a lovely song. Mm, thank um, you. Losing My Religion, Enjoy the Silence, which was on um, Karma Code. And on Delirium, the deluxe version, you've done um, Live to Tell by yeah. Madonna. So, so why, did you, why did you choose that one? That was a little random uh, in a way that it was out of the concept mm. of, uh, of, of, de of Delirium, of the, the record Delirium and all the songs that we wrote for it. Uh, we included it because it has a it has a special story. Basically, what happened? Uh, I was talking to Marco's girlfriend, mm -hmm. and I, I told her that when I was a little girl, every time that it was raining out, I was a big Madonna fan. Mm -hmm. I would start to sing "Live to Tell," and I was in my mind, I was sure that before I would add to sing the song, the rain would stop. And we were talking about something sad that was happening in, in my life, so this song came out and mm. I was like, I wish it would work, you know, with things because I was doing this and that. So this thing might have hit her in, in mm. some way, so she told Marco 
and Marco for my birthday wrote the music of Live to Tell and I didn't know anything so on my birthday they just gave me like a little mm -hmm. a little box and I was like what's in it and there was a USB cable and USB <laughs> key and I put it on the computer mm -hmm. and I heard the music and it was just like I hope the rain is gonna stop and I I'm bawling again. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm just like it was very, very <laughs> emotional. And then I, w I told them that I really, I really love it. And I told Marco, why don't we put some lyrics and mm. see how it is, just for fun. Mm -hmm. So we did it and we liked it and we said, why don't we put it in? Because I mean, it makes total sense. Because the lyrics, yeah. if you look at them from a different angle, make total sense with the theme, even if the song is not really belonging to the record. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing sort of covers EP or a, or a covers re album? No. No, 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 like no we, we, we do cover purely for fun mm -hmm. because it's nice sometimes to bring a song on the road that everybody knows. I mean, mm -hmm. we do it with Enjoy the Silence. It's great to, yeah, yeah. to see people singing. It's part of the show, you know, it's part of the energy of the show itself. It also allows people that might not know those bands to actually go out and discover the, the, the originals as well. That's true. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that they know Enjoy the Science. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But maybe <laughs> Especially dub, the dubstore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe not dubstore, but... Yeah. I know um, when I interviewed you a fair few years ago, I mentioned the song um, Sen Senzafine yeah. and how poetic it sounds sung in your native language. Mm. And I asked you then if you'd thought about singing any others in Italian. And, uh, you're not, you're not to be honest, that? I don't like to sing in you Italian. Don't? I mean, I love Italy. I'm mm -hmm. super proud of my country. But I don't like to sing in Italian. Mm -hmm. It's something that, I mean, it's, it's weird, but I don't feel comfortable to sing in Italian because when you write in Italian, the best sounding words are really, really cheesy. Mm -hmm. And I just don't want to use them. You know, I, I don't want to read cheesy words just because they sound good. So to write Sensefina was not easy. Yeah. To write it in a way that would sound good in my ears and mm -hmm. it would not be cheesy. Mm -hmm lyrically so I, I'm not I, I'm not crazy for no. it, like writing songs in Italian so that, that it doesn't it doesn't come out spontaneously and uh -huh. and comfortably that's all mm -hmm. yeah I'm not against it but when it happens it yeah. happens naturally we just yeah. don't want to sit down okay let's write a song in, Ita yeah. in Italian we'll see. We'll see. <coughs> when you when you two is um, finishing a few days time are you back over to Europe for a few shows or is that is that it for this year after the story you mean mm -hmm. uh, we finish at the end of the month with mm -hmm. four Italian shows then we go back home and we have like not even a couple of weeks and we have to go back to New York because mm -hmm. we're going to be performing at the Epiphone Revolver Music Awards, mm -hmm. which is, is going to be great. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be Megadeth, Oz, Zach Wilde, there's going to be other artists you know, in a super gem. It's going mm. to be pretty crazy. I've been nominated as Best Vocalist, All right, which, so, is, yeah. which was a surprise. So you have to go then. Which was a surprise as mm -hmm. well. So it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. But you spend you'll be spending Christmas at home for a few days. I don't know yet. Mm. I don't know. I still have to find out. You know what my boyfriend is doing because mm. I mean he works in the business as well. So yes. kind of we kind of have to see because yeah. <laughs> that's part of the job. Check, I mean sometimes schedules. it's hard to make yeah, plans. Yeah. Good luck with the show tonight. Thank and you. Too, and, and happy Christmas in advance. Merry Christmas. <laughs>